Hello, Mark here from Henry & Sons. In this video today, we are going to show you how to service the entire four-point bearing region of a VMAG HP C or E series machine. That's going to be the whole drive mechanism for the in-feed scroll. A couple things we want to go over here is uh, safety. Uh, please read and understand all the safety guidelines that are in your owner's manual for your VMAG. Also, make sure you lock out the power before starting this job. <clears throat> make sure the main power is turned off and you have a lockout on the machine. The tools necessary for the four-point bearing service are the tools I have in front of me here. We have a puller. This is a simple piece of two by two uh, square tubing, quarter inch wall, and um, just a piece of all thread with a nut welded on the end and a nut welded on the square tubing. Sometimes this may be necessary to remove the throat from the machine. There's actually two threaded holes that you place bolts down through. Sometimes that is not enough pressure to get it up, so sometimes we need to use this tool. <clears throat> Half inch impact gun for the puller, dead blow hammer, ball peen hammer, a Phillips screwdriver, a couple of other flathead screwdrivers, uh, a pick for getting out uh, some of the smaller debris out of cracks, <clears throat> 17 millimeter end wrench, uh, some aluminum pieces for using our puller, food grade grease, veneer caliper for uh, measuring thickness of, of shim stock, a uh, set of feeler gauges a metric set of Allen wrenches, a couple of uh, small pro, uh, pry bars, and also sometimes it may be necessary to have an impact kit with uh, Phillips and flat screws uh, due to get out the, um, the slide ring. Sometimes you'll have to use that impact to break those free. And then uh, we have a small punch for removing the plastic covers over uh, a lot of the socket head cap screws that hold the catch ring in place along with the funnel, the throat. Okay, first things first, we're going to get started here. We're going to grab a screwdriver and we're going to remove the red seals. These seals actually are in here backwards. So you just get a small screwdriver in there and pull these out. Actually, the lips of the seals are supposed to be facing out or towards the in-feed scroll. So those were installed incorrectly and this bottom one is in incorrectly as well. So we pull these guys out like that and set those aside. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove all of the plastic covers over all of these socket head cap screws. These up here do not have any in here. They have been missing for a while, it looks like. So typically how I get these out of here is I take a small punch right in the center, knock it, knock it down through the plastic, and just pull the plastic cover out like that. So we're going to do the same. Okay, so now that we have all these plastic covers, you can just discard those, throw them away. And now I'm going to just take a little bit of compressed air, because there's pieces of plastic that are down in the heads here, and I'm just going to blow those out. Okay. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove the four socket head cap screws that hold the catch ring in place. You're going to need an 8 millimeter Allen wrench for that. Go ahead, 
and uh, actually you should break them loose on a in a crisscross pattern trying not to distort the catch ring There's our four bolts. So now you can't just grab this catch ring and pull it off. Uh, usually it goes over the four point bearing somewhat snugly. So we just need to get some 12 millimeter uh, bolts to run down through here because the, the catch ring is actually threaded. And uh, we'll grab some bolts, thread them down, and pull this catch ring up. Let me grab some bolts. So just 12 millimeter bolts can be threaded down grab a 10 millimeter allen wrench thread them down until they make contact oh this is going to be a nice easy one this just came right off perfectly <clears throat> So we go ahead and pull the catch ring off. There's your catch ring. We want to make sure when we're cleaning this catch ring, we want to inspect this very closely and make sure that this hard coating is all intact, that there's not pieces of it that have chipped off because if there's pieces chipped off, uh, that will just that'll just tear up the the spring energized seals that you that you put in here the new ones so you want to make sure to inspect this very closely so this is off of here now which is good go ahead and put that down there <clears throat> so next we are going to get a six millimeter allen wrench and we're going to crack all of these bolts that hold the throat in loose. So there's all your bolts. As I said, they're all the same length. You don't have to worry about keeping them separated out. <clears throat> so all the same length. So I just uh, keep all my hardware over here off to the side. Okay. So we have the bolts all out of the throat. This is the throat piece here in the center. And this actually is your four point bearing right here. And this, you can see it moving here. And these tan pieces here, these are the spring energized seals. There's one on the outside, there's one on the inside, and this is called the outer ring here. So now we're going to go ahead and remove the spring energized seals. And you can do that just with a screwdriver carefully, just pulling up on these gently. And then once you get it started, you can just pull them out. Same thing with the outside. Okay, so the spring energized seals have been removed. And next, what we need to do <clears throat> is remove this outer ring. There are um, six bolts that hold this outer ring in and a lot of times they'll have silicone in the heads of them right down here. Uh, this particular one looks like it does not have any silicone in it. So we're gonna need a five millimeter Allen wrench. 
go ahead and break these loose. I'll show you here. If you can see that the height of the head is reduced. So you really don't have much grabbing a hold of it. And if these are really tight, you hit this with an impact and it'll just blow the head of that right out. And then you have to drill it out and that's a whole nother subject so you want to stay away from that so I highly recommend just using hand tools on these because uh, typically they come apart a lot easier now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove this outer ring and there's this packing cord this rubber packing cord that seals the outer ring to the actual body of the machine so you can just go ahead and get under this anywhere and just lift up like that. And this catch ring should come up relatively easy. So that comes off like that. And there you gotta be careful because sometimes there could be shims underneath of this ring. And on this particular unit at the moment, there are no shims, but always be on the lookout when you take this apart because there could be shims here. So this packing cord right here just comes off and every time we uh, do this service we're going to always put a new packing cord in. Uh, so this is going to get discarded. So we'll put this down for our parts to be cleaned up further. Okay so at this point here's our, our four point bearing is becoming more and more exposed. As you can see we still got a little rotation there. Um, so the next step is going to be removing the throat of this machine. In VMAG, they put two threaded holes in here that you can run bolts down through to extract this in a perfect world. But as we all know, the world's not always perfect. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and try this and see how it works on this particular unit. So you get a couple of uh, 10 millimeter bolts. Actually I like to take a little anti-seize and put on the head of that bolt because that could really make the difference between success and failure. Anti-seize is always good. Let me go grab a 17 millimeter wrench.